Hey, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Okay, so this is going to be about all the people who were indicted with Trump in Georgia. Fonnie Willis indicted uh, these uh, 19 people, including Donald Trump, uh, Don or Donald Trump plus 18 other people. And the first seven or eight of those are pretty, um, we, we know who they are. And then some of them are a little, um, uh, we probably haven't heard their names before, but they might be uh, false electors or folks who let people into buildings uh, to see what was going on at the time. So I have a list of those folks here. I actually downloaded the, downloaded the 98 uh, page, uh, these are only four pages here, but the 98 page uh, indictment. I haven't read through it all yet. Um, but uh, this video will be just about uh, these indictees, uh, Fonnie Willis, and uh, we'll see how far the reading gets us. So I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. So here we go into this uh, huge uh, mess that uh, has uh, come uh, with uh, Donald Trump and Georgia. So uh, yeah, so like I said, I've got uh, all these uh, names and uh, so the names of those indicted are on the left and the indictment uh, accusations or where the, what they violated are here on the right. And you'll see here that these uh, violations are numbered one through, oh, however many there are. How many are there by the way? 41. And, um, and under their names, it shows you right here that uh, Donald John Trump counts 1, 5, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, 27 through 29, and then 38 through 20, uh, 39. So it's very interesting. Some of them just have two counts, just have two counts. And um, there's only one here who actually has perjury, and this is Robert David Cheely. So he's got a bunch of counts, and then the last one being perjury, which is number 41 on the list, and he's the only person in these indictments who's charged with uh, perjury. So that's uh, what we've got here. And I thought I'm going to set this off to the side so I have the names uh, to reference when I want to. But um, now we'll get down to uh, the cards. <sighs> you have to think uh, what a mess uh, this is and how their lives are just... Um, ruined forever um, uh, and of course there's Rudy Giuliani who I think is the second one on the list and if you're gonna think that they're listed here in order of importance or guilt perhaps um, that might be useful because it starts of course with Trump and it ends up with this person Misty Hampton also known as Emily Misty Hayes um, and so the tends to be that these latter names are those that we don't recognize except for Sidney Catherine Powell. That's Sidney Powell. Um, so you, you have to think that perhaps these are, you know, the first uh, indictee is the most serious and then uh, right on down to the least uh, involved but still indicted, which is not good. And then that doesn't even mention all the unindicted co-conspirators who uh, it's a uh, thought that there are lots of them and that they must be uh, providing information, somehow cooperating, or perhaps they might have been indicted too. Although it could be that there just wasn't enough concrete evidence against these other 30 people to put them into an indictment. Um, and some of them may have talked, some of them may have cooperated, uh, some of them may be just as surprised right now to find out that they're uh, unindicted co-conspirators. Um, who knows? So that's what we're gonna talk about today, but before we do any of that, I'm going to have just a moment of meditation. Okay. So, these uh, folks who are further down the list 
uh, beyond the first seven or eight. Um, and the cards uh, should understand what I'm getting at. Are those folks, uh, is this list of 19 uh, indicted people going to whittle its way down? And if so, can you tell us what the final number would be? And we'll do that in four cards. So three cards for what will these uh, people get whittled down? And then one final card to see uh, perhaps what that number might be. Let's see what happens. Okay, so the first three cards here uh, uh, will be speaking to will some of these people be uh, knocked out. So we've got uh, two of cups. Two of cups are perfect pairings. And these are sympathetic. Cups are sympathetic. They're heartfelt. They're emotional. So these, um, these uh, pairings, so that tells me, yes, someone's going to join the game, okay? Uh, the next one as to whether some of these uh, uh, 19 will fall off the uh, prosecution list is the fool. So the fool is a new journey. So that's starting something new. So that could in fact be that idea that uh, th this is the path that they're on now of being indicted, but there may be something uh, different in, in the future. And then the last one being the two of swords, yeah, having to make a choice. Perfectly interesting. Yeah, so uh, will some of these folks drop up? Yes, they will. Because why? Because they decided to join the team. Uh, that puts them on a new path, and they had to make that choice. Now, this final card, I hope, is going to give us an idea of how many... Um, um, final indictees where they'll be. I was pausing because I was trying to decide if I wanted to ask that question as to whether um, how many would fall off. But no, I think uh, I've been uh, reading this as far as how many total indictees might there be. And so this has got five, six, seven. Seven indictees. So let's count them from the top, the most uh, important ones. Donald Trump, uh, Rudy Giuliani, uh, John Eastman, uh, Mark Meadows, uh, Kenneth Chesbro, he's the attorney who came up with the, um, the idea of the uh, uh, electors. Uh, Jeffrey uh, Bosert Clark, uh, attorney. Uh, Jenna Ellis, attorney. Ray Stalling, uh, so we're Matt, so that's seven. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Stops with Jenna, Jenna Ellis, perhaps. So seven uh, in the final. And look at that. This woman is very happy. As a matter of fact, the seven of coins is looking at the harvest and saying, could I have picked more? Have I harvested enough? And it looks like, yeah, this is a happy, she has harvested uh, and is happy with her harvest of seven final indictees. So perhaps that's where we're at. There'll be seven. Um, let's go a full Celtic cross on how this uh, is going to play out and hoping that this can talk to us about uh, when and how soon, uh, how long uh, before we get to the end. And um, so those are the sort of clues I'll be looking for in this 10 card draw. So we'll get six first and then another four, two, three, four. Remember, I'll be talking about these cards towards the end of the video so you can see more of them and get a little more detail on what this pack is like. So this will be the first six cards of a 10 card Celtic cross. So the signifier card as for how this thing is going to go is, uh, well, <laughs> the Nine of Swords. This is going to be a nightmare for someone. You can see the scary face uh, in the dreams. And all these swords of truth, justice, rules, and law just raining down on this person who is just uh, having a nightmare. So that's the signifier card. This will be a nightmare for those indictees. Um, what else can the, the cards tell us about this whole situation? The challenge to that, then, is going to be temperance. The challenge to all of these uh, issues is temperance. Okay, So I think that's going to be on the part of justice, finding the right uh, way to balance this out. The uh, final... Uh, the base of this whole thing for this uh, thing is the Knight of Wands. So the Knight is the fighter of the Royal Court. Wands are actions, plans, and the base of this thing, this has to be the District Attorney, uh, Fannie Willis. That's the, she is the base of this thing, willing to take that plan and fight forward. And the past of this is all about the value. This is a great big uh, one 
of coins, uh, one of pentacles, a uh, great big value card, but look, it's in the past. They were trying to get the big payoff. That's what was going on. In the sky of this is the nine of cups and the nine of cups. So in the sky is, is the greedy merchant. This is the fellow who's willing to show off all his trophies, okay? All of his trophies, the nine of cups, but this is all emotional and, uh, and very uh, personal to him. So the sky of this is showing off all the trophies. That could be, as a matter of fact, the prosecution willing to say, look at what we uh, have here in this case. And then the likely outcome for these folks is the tower card. So the likely outcome in the first part of that is that it's going to be a nightmare. But uh, let's get the last four cards uh, of this uh, uh, Celtic cross. We'll take them one at a time. The really uh, signifier of that question is um, what about the situation? Well, it's again, the two of swords. It's all about truth and justice and making a choice. Okay. The... Um, environment that that's in is the star card and look at the star card she's way up in the major arcana she's got a magical balance of what's going on and she's perfectly happy to be in the spotlight the environment that making uh, these accusations is of truth justice rules and law is in the environment of being the star swanee willis the hopes and the fears for this is here again in the Knight of Swords. So now this Knight of Wands of action has become a Knight of Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law. And then the final uh, outcome for the whole thing is right here is the Two of Cups. Well, it's interesting. It's finding a partnership. It's finding that balance, that emotional, uh, makes sense uh, balance. Oh, is this the Five of Cups? Oh, I'm so wrong. This is the Five of Cups. This is not good. So the Five of Cups, as you can see right here, you've got three cups that are in turmoil. Okay, this is emotional turmoil, and there, but there's still two left in the window. So the final outcome for these folks is um, that they're not going to be happy. They're going to be tending to cry over spilt milk. But um, the good news is that they're not being sentenced to death, I guess. So there will be a little redeeming uh, quality there. And that's what I get. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hey. Oh, say so, so. This is a Grand or Tarot Grand Lux. Tarot Grand Lux, another Cairo Marchetti uh, deck. This guy is just a machine putting out these cards, but they come in a great box. And uh, they've got a really useful uh, guidebook as far as the divination is concerned. It's easy to read and, it's, you know, handheld. And, you know, it's just another of uh, Cairo Marchetti's version of uh, tarot cards, which all seem to be pretty cool. Um, they're easy to use. And they've got a nice kind of a matte finish that doesn't slide out of your hands too easily. And uh, so I do this so you get a chance to look at the cards and see how they are. Maybe you don't uh, buy a lot of cards or look at a lot of different cards. But if you watch my channel, you do. <laughs> so there we go. Good way to get to your energy all over the all over them, and um, and so I don't know. I think that kind of makes for a better uh, read uh, when everything's all said and done. So here we go. These uh, tarot grand lux. It's some funny thing that I always want to say grand lux tarot, and um, I bet everybody does that. But anyway, we'll use these and get this going. Well. Coming back tomorrow, I'll be doing it all again, so ciao for now.